Well, good morning, Calvary Assembly of God, the Grace Place. It's so good to be with you again for our second video sermon uh, from the Hope series from Pastor West. I want to thank you all so much for tuning in last week. Hundreds of you were able to watch the sermon and I'm sure be ministered to. So I want to just say how proud I am of our church, how proud I am for uh, the church stepping up and engaging in social media, watching the videos and the different ministry opportunities that are being provided. Uh, I'm just so impressed. Uh, Grace Place family, you are awesome. You're my favorite church, and uh, I love you so much. God bless you. I want to go over just a couple announcements real quick for you. Uh, there's a couple changes to our online ministry schedule. First of which is on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., the youth ministry is going to be having an additional service. And then also on Sunday at 7 p.m. is when they're going to have their regular service. Uh, it was 6 p.m., but the, they decided to move it to 7 p.m. because they felt that was a little more conducive uh, for families and dinner time and things like that. Also, I want to let you know that on Fridays at 7 p.m., uh, the Young Adult Ministry is going to be having online services through Facebook Live, and we'll be posting links to that everywhere on our main page, on our prayer page, and also on the, the Grace Place Young Adults Facebook page. So please uh, tune into that. Uh, the age restriction has been lifted. I know many of you will be excited about that. So uh, Pastor Lincoln did an incredible job this last Friday. So please tune in on Friday at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live for Young Adult Ministry. Now, this coming Monday is the end of the 15 days to slow the spread mandate from the president and the CDC. So I just want to let you know that we are planning on continuing doing church this way, this virtual way through videos. But in the event something changes to where we are allowed uh, to meet in person and in our building, uh, we will be letting you know about that via the Facebook page. And that is The Grace Place AG Facebook. So if you just search for that uh, in your internet browser, you will find a link that will take you right to our Facebook page, and you'll be able to stay informed of that announcement. I want to thank you guys so much uh, for how uh, you have supported this church and your giving. I went to the mailbox on Wednesday. It was just three days after uh, the video last week, and I was so overwhelmed by the uh, support um, and the encouragement of your giving that I saw. God bless you for that on behalf of uh, the staff, this church, the board, and the missionaries that we are committed to continuing to support during this season. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are incredible. What a faithful church. What a blessing to be part of this family. So I want to remind you real quick of our options for giving. For those of you who are able to continue to give, we're encouraging everybody to mail their gift in. And our address for that is P.O. Box 620, Fort Ashby, West Virginia, 26719. And so you can either mail your gift in to that address, or you can take that address and you can uh, put it in your online bill pay through your banking institution. And what that will allow you to do is through your, your bill pay of your bank, they will mail a check to the church on your behalf. And it's 100% free for you and for the church. So if you don't want to have to leave your house, that's a great option as well. And again, our address is Calvary Assembly of God, P.O. Box 620, Fort Ashby, West Virginia, 26719. All right, so just real quick, I want to take a moment and pray over you all and bless you. Um, wherever you are, I pray that the Holy Spirit is with you and that you tangibly feel the presence of God during this season. Heavenly Father, right now, I just thank you for this house. I thank you for this church and the many blessings that you have afforded it. What an incredible group of people that we get to do life with, God. I pray your blessing and that the comforter of your spirit would be with each and every person of our house that you would give them peace in seasons of uncertainty, that you would give them soundness of mind and a sense of joy and encouragement in this time, Father. I thank you for all that you're doing. I thank you for the connections that are being built in this season. And above all, God, I pray that your name would be glorified and that your kingdom would benefit from the work and the faithfulness of this church. In your name I pray, amen, amen. Real quick, just before Pastor West comes, I want to encourage you, get your Bibles out, get a pen and a piece of paper, and make this your family devotional time on Sunday, all right? So um, we're not going to be providing um, the words for the sermon references, the verses, so I just encourage you, get that Bible out and dig into the Word with Pastor West. But without further ado, it's my privilege to present your lead pastor, Wes Beam. 
It's a privilege to uh, get to share the word with you again um, through the uh, venue of technology and, and the, uh, through Facebook and, and how uh, we're having to connect now is different, but uh, I'm excited that we can still uh, share uh, what God is, is wanting to speak into our hearts. And, and I want to uh, also again thank our team for working so hard to uh, keep the church moving forward. And we've gotten so many uh, comments from um, the, the uh, video last week and the word that was shared and, and all the team uh, has come together and, and, and actually impacted every generation of our church through uh, the technology that we have and uh, so excited about that. But I get to uh, bring a message that the Lord has laid upon my heart um, this week and it's actually a part two to a little mini series that I'm preaching. The Lord just really dropped in my heart to talk about hope and if we ever needed some hope. It's the day that we live in. And uh, I want to just uh, title this today, Providence. This is part two of hope. And I want to talk about Providence. I was actually um, just sharing with my wife this week and and uh, that word just kind of got in my heart and in my spirit. And uh, we began to talk about how God you know, works in our lives and he guides us and he leads us. And when we think of that word, as it relates to God's work in our lives, we think about him sustaining us and leading us. And if we ever needed uh, his leading, it's the days that we live in. Um, there's actually even a city in Rhode Island, the capital city of Rhode Island is called Providence. And it was founded in 1636 by Roger Williams, who named the area in honor of God's merciful Providence. So before we go to Ruth chapter two, just want to share a couple thoughts with you, uh, a couple of scriptures. I want to look at Psalm 121, verse 5. It says, the Lord watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. It's so neat to know that God is looking out for us. And, and it's powerful to think that even if I can't see him working or I can't see his hand in my life, I can have faith and rest in the fact that he is still working. And I want to just share a a funny story, something that happened in my life and a number of years ago, it's been a good while ago, and I've shared this story multiple times with our church family, but it really fits with uh, the sermon today. And as we were traveling, my father-in-law and I, we were uh, in, a, in a hotel and again, multiple family members were there and we had walked into this workout area and there was a swimming pool and a hot tub, jacuzzi was there and, and we actually got in that hot tub. And uh, you have to understand that I grew up very sheltered and never experienced you know, some of these types of things in my life. And I don't know how many, if I'd been in a hot tub that often, but we sat in that hot tub and the water was actually just kind of recirculating. So there was, you know, just some bubbles going up and, and we were enjoying it, you know, it was warm. And, and uh, we, we were just there for, you know, a few minutes enjoying it. And a, a man walks by and reaches over in the wall and flips a switch on. And all of a sudden, all of those jets in that hot tub came alive. And we just looked at each other and smiled. Neither one of us were gonna say a word because we realized that we didn't understand the full capability of that hot tub until the power switch had been turned on. And I thought about that in relation to how God works in our lives. I think often we don't have a full understanding of how he can come into our lives and how he is well able and capable of connecting with us and energizing us and encouraging us and strengthening us. So I wanna just, just speak to you today from this, this thought process of how God wants to get involved in your life. God cares about you. I'm reminded of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 through 20. And I want to read these scriptures to you from the Passion Translation because it's a really good setup to the story of Ruth that I want to share today, or this part of the story. But Paul writes, Then by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside of you, and the resting place of his love will become the very source and the root of your life. Then you will be empowered to discover what every holy one experiences, the great magnitude of the, of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions. How deeply intimate and far-reaching is his love, how enduring and inclusive it is, endless love beyond measurement that transcends your own understanding. This extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all of this. He will achieve infinite, infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. So God is working in you. And so I want you through this story today to understand that God is 
again, capable and well able, and he is available to work in your life today. And so the story of Ruth reminds us that we're not alone. And when we give God space in our lives, he will lead us. He will even orchestrate our lives. He will direct our lives. And so we're going to pick up the story today, Ruth chapter 2. We're going to read 23 verses and I uh, just want to share this with you and challenge you with just some thoughts from it today because I believe that we can see reflected in Ruth's life the work of God that can also be reflected in our lives. So let's look at Ruth chapter 2 verse 1. Now there was a wealthy and influential man in Bethlehem named Boaz who was a relative of Naomi's husband Elimelech. One day, Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go into the harvest fields and pick up the stalks of grain left behind by anyone who is kind enough to let me do it. Naomi replied, all right, my daughter, go ahead. So Ruth went out to gather grain behind the harvesters. And as it happened, she found herself working in a field that belonged to Boaz, the relative of her father-in-law, Elimelech. While she was there, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you, he said. The Lord bless you, the harvesters replied. Then Boaz asked the foreman, who is that young woman over there? Who does she belong to? And the foreman replied, she is a young woman from Moab who came back with Naomi. She asked me this morning if she could gather grain behind the harvesters. She has been hard at work ever since, except for a few minutes rest in the shelter. Boaz went over and said to Naomi, listen, my daughter, stay right here with us when you gather grain. Don't go to any other field. Stay right behind the young women working in the field. See which part of the field they are harvesting and follow them. I have warned the young men not to treat you roughly. And when you are thirsty, help yourself to the water that they have drawn from the well. Ruth fell at his feet and thanked him warmly. What, I've done, what have I done to deserve this kindness? She, uh, she asked, I'm a foreigner. Yes, I know, Boaz replied. But I also know about everything you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. I have heard how you left your father and mother in your own land and live here among complete strangers. May the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge, reward you fully for what you have done. I hope I can continue to please you, sir, she replied. You have comforted me by speaking so kindly to me, even though I am not one of your workers. At mealtime, Boaz called to her, come over here and help yourself to some food. You can dip your bread in the sour wine. So she sat with his harvesters and Boaz gave her some roasted grain to eat. She ate all she wanted and had some left over. When Ruth went back to work again, Boaz ordered his young men, let her gather grain right among the sheaves without stopping her and pull some heads of barley from the bundles and drop them on purpose for her. Let her pick them up and don't give her a hard time. So Ruth gathered barley there, there all day and she beat out the grain that eaten and filled out an entire basket. She carried it back into town and showed it to her mother-in-law, Ruth, and also gave her the roasted grain left over from her meal. Where did you gather all this grain today, Naomi asked. Where did you work? May the Lord bless the one who helped you. So, so Ruth left her mother-in-law, uh, uh, told her mother-in-law about the man in whose field she had worked. She said, the man I work for today with today is Boaz. May the Lord bless him, Naomi told her daughter-in-law. He is showing his kindness to us as well as to our dead uh, husband. That man is one of our closest relatives, one of our family redeemers. Then Ruth said, what's more, Boaz even told me to come back and stay with his harvesters until the entire harvest is completed. Good, Naomi explained. Do as he said, my daughter. Stay with his young women right through the whole harvest. You might be harassed in other fields, but you'll be safe with him. So Ruth worked alongside the women in Boaz's fields and gathered grain with them until the end of the barley harvest. Then she continued working with them through the wheat harvest in the early summer. And all the while, she lived with her mother-in-law. A long story, a long read, but I just want to just pull out just a couple of thoughts from this story, actually four thoughts that I believe can challenge us or help us to understand that just as God's providence rested over Ruth, God's providence can rest over you and I. And so the first thought is this, that God provided divine direction. God provided divine direction. So let's go back and, and read or look at Ruth chapter 2, verse 3. It says, So Ruth went out to gather grain behind the harvesters. And I love what it says. And as it happened, she found herself working in the field that belonged to Boaz, the, uh, the relative of her father-in-law, Elimelech. And so this is what I believe, just like with Ruth, you and I can have 
as it happened moments in our lives. Again, God's providence rests on us. God's leading us. God's orchestrating his will in our lives. And so it's amazing to know, think about this. You as an individual, you as, as a person that is, li you're living in this, this world and you're facing adversity, you're facing circumstances, but you can be assured, rest assured, that the very God who created the universe is working in your life. God has a destination for you and God is working in you and through you to get you to that destination. And sometimes we struggle finding our way. Sometimes we struggle getting where we need to go. And, and uh, I'm so thankful that when we're traveling, my wife loves to use the GPS. And if we take a wrong turn, that GPS will speak to us and say, you need to reroute. And there are times in our lives where God is providing direction and we, we maybe get off course. Maybe we don't follow the route that we're supposed to follow. We don't, we're not listening to his direction. I'm so thankful that we can get rerouted. I read a funny story this week about the Reverend Billy Graham early in his ministry. He was preaching, traveling, and he arrived at a small town to preach a sermon. He was wanting to find the post office to mail a letter and he asked a young boy where the post office was. When the boy told Billy Graham he, where it was and began to direct him that way, Billy Graham thanked him and said to the boy, if you'll come this evening to church, I'll tell you about how to get to heaven. The boy replied, I don't think I'll be there. You don't even know how to get to the post office. I think that's so funny, that story, but it reminds us that, that we all need direction in our lives, especially when we feel overwhelmed. Reminded of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12, Jehoshaphat, the king of, of Judah, is, is facing a, a very difficult season in his life and he was facing an army that was greater than, than, than his army and he was facing this adversity. And I love the words that he speaks. He says, for we have no power against this great multitude. This thing, this army that's coming against us is so overwhelming, but he says, our eyes are upon you. And I wanna encourage you in this season of your life, keep your eyes on Jesus because the word says he is the author and he is the finisher of our faith. And, and often we just see what's happening around us and we forget the one who lives on the inside of us as we are the children of God. My wife's an amazing decorator and, and uh, she looks at the aesthetics of a room or a house or a building and uh, wherever she's at and it, it's very eye-pleasing to her. And, and I've often told her, I've told her this before, that, that what you don't see is even more important than what you do see. What you don't see is the footer, the foundation, the, the, the support walls, the header that's over a, a room or a door that, that's supporting all the weight. And it's, that's just the picture of the work of God in our lives that, that what we don't often see is what's giving us the support for our lives. I'd also like to share a, a couple of other scriptures with you related to this point, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And we, we've keyed in on this the last number of weeks. Trust in the Lord your God with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. And then Psalm 23, one through three, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He leads me into restful, restful green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me. And this is that picture of direction along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Number two, God also provides through his providence, divine connection. I believe this, God can connect me to those that will be a resource or a source in my life that can, that can bring that can bring health and wholeness and healing and life. I believe this God is working behind the scenes and we see in this story where God is, is actually causing a divine setup between Ruth and Boaz that will provide for her. And if you remember the story from last week, she leaves a place that, that she's familiar with and she's going into a place that's unfamiliar. And in that unfamiliar place, God meets her there. And even in your life today, I want you to know that it may seem difficult, but God is able to turn the difficulties around and God is able to connect you with provision. It also reminds me of the story of Joseph in Genesis chapter 50. His brothers are, are looking to him and he has now walked through this, this season of his life where he's been sold into slavery and he's gone through all this adversity. His brothers are standing before him. His brothers are the very ones who had sold him into slavery and he says to them, what you intended to harm me, God intended it all for good, and so God can turn it around. And so in Ruth chapter two, verse five, it says, then Boaz asked his foreman, I want you to think about this divine connection. Who is that young woman over there? Who does she belong to? I called my daughter this week and I asked her, I said, when, 
when young people are talking about dating or asking about someone, what is the, the question they ask? And she said this, they were asked the question, is she talking to anyone? Are they talking to anyone? Are they talking? Are they, you know, back in the day it was, you know, are they going out with anyone? And so Boaz is saying to his foreman, who is that girl over there? I've got my eye on her. Is she talking to anyone? And God is getting ready to put this man into Ruth's life who will provide for her. And he was a man, the Bible says, who was important. He was respected. He was wealthy. He was well-to-do. And so if you're looking, if you're single looking for a man, look for a Boaz for your life. God can connect you with someone who can be your Boaz. Hebrews 10, 24 says, discover creative ways to encourage others and to motivate them toward acts of compassion, doing beautiful works as expressions of love. So, so think about how you can connect and how God can use you in the process of life as you're serving him. Number three, God also provides divine protection. In his providence, God provides divine protection. Ruth chapter two, verses eight through nine. Boaz went over to, and said to Ruth, listen, my daughter, stay right here with us. When you gather grain, don't go to any other fields. Stay right behind the young women working in my field. See which part of the field they're harvesting and then follow them. I have warned the young men not to treat you roughly. And when you're thirsty, help yourself to the water they've drawn from the well. Boaz says, I'm going to protect you. And so we see the providence of God providing for or protecting Ruth in this season of her life. Reminds me of Psalm chapter 91, verse 4. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. He will, his faithful promises are your armor and protection. And then number four, I want to just stay on this one just for a few moments. God provides divine provision. God provides divine provision. So as we are under the providence of God, I believe this. God will not only direct you, and connect you. He will not only protect you, but he will also provide for you. And in biblical days, agricultural law allowed for those who were in need to go behind the, the, the workers in a field and they could pick up the grain that would be dropped or left over. And this was a, a, a process or something called gleaning. And it comes from a Hebrew word, lagat, which means to collect or gather or to pick up. In Leviticus chapter 19, verses 9 and 10, it says, When you harvest the crops of your land, do not harvest the grain along the edges of your fields, and do not pick up what the harvesters drop. It is the same with your grape crops. Do not strip every last bunch of grapes from the vines, and do not pick up the grapes that fall on the ground. Leave them for the poor and the foreigners living among you. I am the Lord your God. So God is, is, is allowing Ruth to be a part of this process called gleaning. In Ruth chapter 2, verse 23, it says, So Ruth worked alongside the women in Boaz's field and gathered grain with them until the end of the barley harvest. Then she continued working with them through the wheat harvest into the early summer. All the while, she lived with her mother-in-law. So we see Ruth being, being drawn into this, this field, being led by God into this field where Boaz could take care of her and provide for her. And God is actually providing for Ruth in this season where it seemed like it would be so difficult. And when you follow the story along, it says when she gets back to Ruth, Ruth gets back to, I'm sorry, Naomi. Naomi begins to question her, where did all of this, this, this provision come from? And she says, this man Boaz took care of me and provided. And it was God's way of looking out for not only Ruth, but also for Naomi. Let me connect a couple of verses of scriptures as it relates to you and I. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, it says, And God will generously provide all you need, and then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. God wants to provide for you. God wants to take care of you. God wants to, to allow his provision, his providence to, to rest over your life in this season. And then in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Can I stop and say this to you today? We're in a season where worry abounds, where anxiety abounds. God's word says that we can pray instead of living a life of worry and know God, just as you provided for Ruth, you will provide for my life. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. You know, I know I'm just sitting in a room with a camera right now, 
And uh, I'm, you know, some people would say, well, is it hard? I've been asked the question, is it hard to, to preach when you don't have a congregation listening to the words that you share? Can I tell you what's exciting is the word of God. I love to preach to people, but I'm excited to, to say to you today that God's word, God's word can change your circumstance. You can live with hope today. You don't have to live in anxiety today. God can change your life in a moment. His providence can change your very destiny in one moment. And so I want to encourage you with that today. I want to I want to just uh, close this out with just a story from my life this week and how God's been working. My brother had one of my brothers had actually sent me a text and he said, "Listen to this song." And I went on YouTube and I listened to the song and it was just really touching my life. And if you those of you that go on YouTube as you're listening to something or watching something, it'll give you some uh, suggestions uh, down below and you can actually connect with those uh, maybe a song or or whatever it is that you're listening to. There'll be another song there. And so I. I saw this song from Kirk Franklin called My Life Is In Your Hands, and I actually just opened that or just started that song, and, and for about, I don't know, it was a, a, maybe a half hour, 45 minutes, I just played that song over and over and over again, and the song says, you don't have to worry. You don't have to be afraid that God is with you. He's with you in those moments and, and that you can just lift your hands and you can praise God. And I want to encourage you, maybe you'd like to go on YouTube and, and connect with that song and listen to it because you don't have to, to worry. You don't have to be overwhelmed because your life, it's in God's hands today. And you can trust him and you can know that he is the master of the wind and he is the master of your life. One more verse of scripture and we're going to pray. 2 Corinthians 13, 14, and this is what I speak over you today. I speak these words over you today. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I wanna pray for you. If you're in this, uh, or hearing this, uh, um, the, the words that I'm speaking today, or watching this video, I wanna just encourage you. If you don't have peace, God's providence brought you to this, this message today for you to know that Jesus loves you. He has a plan for your life, that he gave his life for you. And you can simply open your heart and say, Jesus, come in and be my Lord and be my Savior. God, today, I just, just believe that as we open our hearts to you, God, I believe that as I begin to pray right now and speak life over maybe someone who is listening or has listened to these words, that maybe they, they are not in relationship with you, Lord. God, I pray right now that they would just respond to you and they would, they would lift their hands and say, God, I need you. God, because we, we have the hope of salvation today. We have the hope of life today through Jesus. And I pray that, that as I'm speaking these words and praying, God, that they would, would open their heart and say, Jesus, come in and be my Lord and be my Savior today. Lord, your word declares if we confess and open ourselves, our lives to you. If we confess our need of you, you would come in and you would change the very course of our life. God, I also pray over those who know you that have been living with anxiety, with fear, with feeling overwhelmed right now. God, I pray that they would take these words today and apply them to their lives. God, that they would live with hope today. God, they would understand that your providence is over them. Your word is what can lift them out of, uh, of a pit, maybe of discouragement and despair, Lord. Maybe they've been living less than and they don't understand the full capability, God, of your work in their lives. Help them to receive that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, I pray that we al would allow your life to become our life. In Jesus' name, speak into us strongly today, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit. We give you praise and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I wanna encourage you, if you uh, maybe open your heart to Jesus Christ, connect with us through Facebook. We'd love to connect with you and uh, stay connected to the word of God. And I want you to know today that God has a plan for your life and it's an amazing plan. God bless you.